Okay, so the next section is researching the services. So you've narrowed down your coaches by watching YouTube videos um, and maybe you've gotten like anywhere now between like one and three different coaches that you're considering working with. So the next thing would be doing something like visiting their website or where they've got their information about their coaching services. So this list is in also just no particular order, but these are the things that certainly you should end up looking at to see if the, their services are right for you as well. Um, so what are they teaching their clients? Are they teaching them pickup or social skills? Um, and is the coaching tailored to you or is it just going to be a copy and paste system? So if it's going to be pick up and if it's going to be a copy and paste system, to be quite honest with you, there is so much content on YouTube. You don't really need to end up going to a coach for that. Um, in all honesty, not to cause coaches to lose clients, but there is so much content out there. But what a lot of guys go to coaches for is that when they kind of have that that moment or that that kind of realization that they do need their hand held and that is absolutely okay that they are struggling to do things on their own they maybe don't know where they're going wrong and now is that moment that yeah the only way that they're going to get results is to actually have a expert or professional help them or look at the issues that they're going through hold them accountable to uh, to make the change and then they can get the results so if uh, so depending on if you want a coach that's going to teach you pickup, then you have to look at is the kind of pickup that they're teaching suitable for you. Um, if they're teaching more social skill stuff, which I think is just a lot better because it means you can handle different situations rather than going into the same interactions, saying the same things, having the same conversations. Um, it means that you can kind of vary it up a little bit. Now, that's not to say that then it means a coach is going to teach you how to have a, a very different conversation every time. We are people of habit and routine. It's very easy to say the same stuff, especially when we've got our own natural script that we've created in our head. Uh, it's a little bit like, you know, if you've uh, learned a joke or if you've seen a joke on TV, um, you might then use it on someone. They might have a bit of a giggle, but nothing crazy but then you might end up saying that same joke or use that same joke several times to different people and you get used to the actual um, uh, punctuation and delivery of it. Um, you can make it even funnier. You might add your own stuff to it, but ultimately then you it might then just be ingrained in you and become part of you, but then it's what you wanted to say, not what someone taught you to say, uh, if that makes sense. So, um, that leads then on to the next thing of like, who are um, the services catered for? So I, I've put here, um, you know, the beginners and intermediate expectations. Um, if you are a beginner and you're going to be doing some program with a coach, then, you know, you have to consider, look at the hiccups now, um, you have to consider that you are maybe only going to get particular kind of results or that the coach is going to help you with very beginner-like stuff. But maybe if you've been someone who has done street approaching for a much longer period of time, then they're gonna be able to cater more to advanced um, circumstances like your conversation skills, your flirting, maybe how you're asking for a phone number, rather than with a beginner, they might say, right, I'm gonna show you how to stop a girl. I'm gonna show you how to give a compliment or I'm going to help you with getting your anxiety worked on so you aren't going to be so afraid to um, approach someone that you're attracted to. So very, very different levels there. So you want to have a look on their, their website or their content um, and see is the content that they're offering um, suitable for you. Um, if let's say maybe you're looking at something very particularly, maybe you're an intermediate person who needs help with um, their dates, um, let's say, then you might find that actually there is a more suitable coach who just specializes in giving coaching advice for dates. Um, same with maybe if you're after uh, information on how to be more sexual, then maybe a particular coach who is um, able to 
uh, demonstrate and teach you how to flirt better, maybe they are going to be the more appropriate coach. Um, but then again, that might also be, there might be coaches that can cover a more basic set of knowledge as well as a much more advanced set of knowledge. So you, you have to kind of like look into, um, like you have to consider, are you a beginner or an intermediate? And then you have to look at, right, what is that coach going to be teaching at that level? Uh, and is it stuff that you need to, to know about rather than stuff that you could have just found online? Um, or on top of that, um, you know, certainly is the coach able to be a bit more bespoke? And if you, when it comes to the consultation, you're able to ask like, look, this is my circumstance. How are you going to be able to help me? Then that is then also just a great sort of litmus test to find out um, if that coach is suitable because if they uh, aren't able to help you with your issue then you know not to go to them um so uh next thing uh looking at what trainings do they offer so if they're referring like uh, a weekend training a week long month or longer um online products and courses or or zoom calls and stuff um when it comes to anything um street approach related um i do think uh doing like the uh, the in-person live action thing is going to be uh, a thousand times better than just having a conversation with someone online. Um, I think the online stuff is maybe going to be more of an aftercare thing. Um, just having a chat with uh, a coach and getting feedback on things. But yeah, I, I'd, if you're a beginner or something, I wouldn't go for that. You want to be looking to do um, like a live coaching experience. Um, but also, you want to then be looking at the locations at where some of these live coaching experiences are. Um, is it going to be, is the coaching in your city or is it somewhere else? Um, and will you learn all the skills that you want to there? So there have been certainly coaches over the last 14 years where, you know, for one reason or another, they've gotten a little bit bored of London and they've uh, traveled the globe to go and do their um, their coaching abroad. But deep down, the, the realistic truth is that they've gone abroad because they just want to go to countries to meet the women that they're attracted to. And a bit like if you kind of got on board of having one ice cream and you suddenly want to uh, open up your palate to other things, then yeah, this is a little bit why they go abroad. So you have to then make sure like if you wanted to work with a coach abroad, it's because you're either also attracted to the women that are in those environments or that you are going to be going to an environment that is very similar to the environment that you want to be doing your street approaching in. So if you, let's say, live in London, then but a coach has maybe gone to a completely different city, maybe out in like Europe or something, then absolutely you're it would be absolutely OK for you to go and do something like that, I think. But if, let's say, you've then got a coach who is going to a very party like environment, like a festival or something, then you do have to ask yourself if I want to learn how to meet women in a city is me going to um, uh, a festival and learning how to do approaching there, am I going to be able to use the skills there and apply it in the environment that I want to be doing it in? If the answer is no, then, um, then clearly those, those particular trainings aren't going to be for you. And if that coach isn't looking to go to a more appropriate city, then you do need to consider going to someone else. You know, don't spend your money learning a skill for an environment uh, or for a type of, um, yeah, for, for an environment um, that, that isn't going to be applicable to you at all. You're only going to end up wasting your money uh, in that sense. Um, pricing. Uh, to be honest, I can't really be too... Um, to bias with the um, the pricing. I mean, I, I certainly have my beliefs that um, the dating industry has got um, some ceilings to the different services. Um, so I will give you what I believe to be um, the right prices um, personally, what, what I believe to be acceptable. Um, if you're doing something like a weekend training, then I would probably expect to maybe pay anywhere between like 300 to 800 pounds. 
Um, but that can be dependent on if that's like a two day or a three day. Uh, in fact, I'd probably say if it's like a three day, go like, go up to like a thousand pound, um, I would say is pretty reasonable. But if it's just uh, a two day weekend thing, I would probably say it's probably got maybe more of a ceiling of like 600, something like that. Um, bear in mind that you are um, only uh, doing street approaching and you are also going to be doing training with a load of other guys. So uh, I'll, I'll cover um, things a, a little bit later about the do's and don'ts on stuff, but uh, or things not to tolerate. But, um, you know, ratio wise, um, you know, you want to make sure that you are getting the attention um, of coaching on you as well as what's going to be going on other people. And I think if your time is being shared out, unfortunately for coaches, I think the price needs to certainly be a lot lower too. Um, if it's something like a week long training, um, I would personally say um, anywhere between maybe like one to two grand, uh, something like that. If it's a month probably no more than like five grand, um, maybe pushing to seven or eight. If that then turns into like maybe two guys can do that sort of training for a month. Um, uh, and this is, again, this is all just my, my own thoughts and opinions with this. I mean, coaches will have varied prices and depending on their experience and stuff as well. Um, online like zoom calls, I wouldn't really be looking to be spending any more than maybe about 50, 60 pounds an hour. Um, again, like, you know, these coaches, the, the only qualification that they've got is that they are meeting and going on dates with women, you know, and as far as, you know, that's as far as we know. Um, and products as well, anywhere between like 10 pound to, to 200 pound. Um, I think anything past that, um, it really needs to be a good program. So, yeah, with that one, I'm probably certainly um, certainly way underpricing with um, online products. But um, I think when you start even going past like like a thousand pound plus, then it can be it can start getting questionable of like, well, what what kind of value is actually there? Um, and again, I'd rather you do in person coaching and spend the money on the right coach. Um, and uh, and. Uh, have you compared the market as well? Like, have you actually done some comparisons between the prices of different coaches? Uh, now that when you do that, don't be the shopper and just go for the cheapest option. Um, make sure if you're going to do that, that the coach is going to be appropriate still for you. Um, don't just be like, oh, well, that one's you know crazy cheaper than that one or that one's five pound cheaper than that. So I've just gone for that one. There have been plenty of horror stories over the years where coach, well, not coaches, but clients of coaches, they had a terrible experience. They've made the wrong decision. They couldn't get a refund and they've ended up spending like double or triple the money, then going to a different coach and then getting the results that they should have got uh, in the first place. So um, yeah, just do it, do a little bit of comparison shopping, even with prices, let alone the actual skill and coaching methods of uh, each coach. Um, and lastly, uh, just in this one um, is, is there aftercare? So um, I know hands down that there isn't. And the truth is it's because a lot of the coaches, they don't really want to be spending time sitting on a laptop and catching up with a client. Um, they would much rather be out on the street and doing the approaching with their clients or themselves. So that is to be honest, where, where I've kind of come in with this, where I can offer that sort of service to hold people accountable, that if they have done coaching with a dating coach, that they can maintain that skill afterwards and that they don't lose it. Because trust me when I say it, it is heartbreaking when I've heard of guys who have spent like, like three, four, five, six, seven plus thousand pounds um, on a coach or coaches and they're back at square one. Um, and it's all because like they just haven't been able to maintain what they learn. Uh, now there are a number of reasons for that, which, you know, it can't, the, the co the dating coaches can't all take the responsibility for it, but you know, there is an element of, you know, being proud of the, uh, the work that you do with clients and making sure like they are to the best of their ability, you know, being able to keep that, that standard, uh, uh, standard there. 
Um, so I think that's pretty much everything in the researching of services. So we'll now just go on to the uh, the next bit once I uh, I let my cat out. <laughs>